I recently bought two Nintendo Switch Lights from Japan for a little bit over 100 British pounds. At about 50 pounds each, I thought it was a fairly good deal. One of them is a limited edition Pokemon version, and the other is this sort of midnight blue GameCube type color. Now they have various different faults. Uh, let's have a look at the Pokemon one first. This one is in really bad condition. Obviously it's been used and abused. It's very dirty. It's cracked. It has lots of scuffs. There's a joystick missing. Shows that it's probably not been very well looked after. There's no free game or free SD card, which is immensely disappointing. And there's a blue screen when you turn it on. Now the blue screen is often a, a repercussion of a faulty chip. Typically what can happen if these things are sort of bent is the chips can ever so slightly be lifted up out of place and then you won't get a connection on one of the solder balls underneath the chip. And I think that's what's happened here. And it's a little bit above my pay grade to try and repair this but I will be taking it to a friend in a future video and we're gonna give it a go. The blue one is in really nice condition, but unfortunately, when I plug this one in, you can see that the screen is smashed. So I think you can probably work out what my intentions are in this video. Before we go any further, a quick word from the sponsor of today's video, iFixit. iFixit are the leading company in the tech repair world, endorsed by Apple and all of the biggest YouTubers but they don't just do tools. Their website also contains very extensive guides for almost all tech you can think of. These guides are extremely comprehensive and are 100% free for everyone to use. I'll link the Switch Lite guide in the description. In each of the guides, they offer the parts for sale to help repair your broken tech. This is the toolkit that I have used for the past few years and I can safely say it's perfect. Click on the link in the description or visit ifixit.com forward slash retrofuture to find out more. So let's start off by dismantling the Pokemon Edition Nintendo Switch. For this, you're gonna need a tri-wing screwdriver. I went ahead and removed all of the screws off the back. And you can see using this close-up camera angle, just how dirty and grotty this switch is. There's a few Phillips screws around the top and bottom of the switch. And after that, we can pry off the back. You need to be really careful around this headphone jack because it sort of clips on and over that. So remove the bottom first and slide the top off. Now obviously the gray shell is in really bad condition, so we're not gonna be using that one. We will use the midnight purple shell, but there is gonna be a slight issue that we're gonna to have to overcome later on. Let's go ahead and remove this metal shield off of the back of the switch and lift it up. Now I was noticing at this point quite a few screws were a little bit rounded, and the fact that that thermal paste pretty much lifted off with no difficulty whatsoever means that someone's probably been in here before. Let's go ahead and disconnect the power first from the battery and go ahead and remove the thermal pipe. Really not sure what the actual names are for these things. Heat shrink, heat sink, I don't know. We're gonna lift off this ribbon cable as well which is connected to the game cartridge slot and the headphone jack. There's a bunch of screws holding this down. The reason being is obviously as this is a console for younger people and these are two points of quite a lot of wear. You know, headphones are gonna be pulled in and out, games are gonna be pushed in and out. It needs to be anchored down very securely, which it certainly is. We can go ahead and lift that off and then we can remove the shoulder buttons. I'm a huge fan of how these shoulder buttons work. There's a small sort of rubber pad which is pushed down and also provides the springiness to the actual button and it's a very easy thing to service or repair. We're gonna go ahead and remove the daughter board which is over to the right hand side of the switch light. The really handy thing about this switch design is that if you inevitably get joystick drift on your switch, you can pretty much resolve it without having to take the switch apart too far. You just have to do this process, which you can see on the screen, and replace the joystick. But because it's not underneath the entire motherboard, you can do it with fairly low experience and very limited tools. This is the 
ribbon cable that connects to that joystick. So you're gonna to have to unplug that, as well as all of the other ribbon cables. There's one for the backlights of the LCD and one for that small sort of button daughter board at the top. Once we've done that, we need to turn our attention back to the main motherboard. There's just so many things to remove on this switch. There's lots of things that I didn't need to remove, like the cover to that speaker. It's an interesting little design there, but yeah, that doesn't actually need to be removed. And then you're gonna turn your attention to some of the really fragile ribbon cables connecting to the screen. Obviously this one is broken, so it's not super important, but if you in any way puncture those ribbon cables or destroy the ribbon cable connectors, it's gonna be a complete write-off. And trying to replace any of the small surface mount components on this switch light is very dangerous because using a heat gun, you can easily damage other components on the switch. We can now remove a bunch of the buttons as we're not gonna be needing them for this build. I'll set everything to the side though and keep it for the future video where hopefully my friend and I will be able to make something out of this. I'm super excited for that, so stay tuned. We can now remove the joysticks. That's gonna help everything lay flat down on the table. And you can see there the screen. It's a very thin and flimsy design. So we're gonna to have to be super careful now that the switch has got a bit of charge in it, we can see that it's actually working, which is really cool. But that screen is just completely useless. There's no way of repairing that. So now we're gonna go ahead and repeat the entire process dismantling this Nintendo Switch Lite, which is just tedious, tedious, tedious. I'm not actually even sure at this point where all the different screws are gonna go. You may or may not see that I messed that up slightly in the future. Stay tuned to find out. We're gonna remove this shield and then remove roughly 80,000 components inside and 20 million screws. You do need to be really, really careful with this. The amount of ribbon cable connectors and screws is just scarily overwhelming. I really do not advise doing this if you haven't had a good bit of experience taking apart uh, small electrical devices before. I have had quite a lot of experience with this and this is still very overwhelming for me. So what we're gonna do now is test the working motherboard in the theoretically working screen. But at this point, we only know that it turns on and goes blue. So we're gonna take the working motherboard and plug it into the working screen, connect enough things up just to test it. We only need to put the motherboard in and the daughter board because that has the controls for the power. I'm not gonna bother with the fan or the game cartridge slot or anything else. We're just gonna test that the motherboard actually works and the screen works as well, which is very nerve wracking because all of this could be for nothing. But I'm sure this screen is going to work. <gasps> there we go. <gasps> Oh my days, it works. Okay, it works. Only now we have to just figure out how to get that screen out. Now, as I mentioned earlier, these screens are paper thin and one small bit of bending in the wrong way could completely destroy this entire thing and render both Nintendo Switch lights completely useless. Now a replacement screen isn't as much as the Switch that I bought, it's about 30 pounds, but for 20 pounds more, I thought it might be kind of fun to try and actually recover a broken Switch. Now to try and remove this screen, what I'm gonna do is start with the known broken screen and try and remove it from the shell. For this, I used some suction cups and some small pry tools from iFixit and a hairdryer. And I was actually able to just lift up a small corner, apply a bit more heat, and slide the pry tool upwards and eventually start lifting up the screen. Don't rush this process. You can take your time, put enough of the pry tools in underneath the screen, apply more heat, lift it up and repeat. And eventually working your whole way round, I was actually able to remove this screen. Now, this is actually a full assembly. You've got that sort of plastic bezel piece which acts as the protector for the LCD panel underneath and also the digitizer. So there's three things sandwiched in here and to try and start pulling these apart more is gonna be very difficult. I repeated the process for the gray screen and you can see what I'm gonna do here just to save a hell of a lot of potential hassle. I'm gonna use the gray screen bezel insert on this switch. It's gonna give it a slightly custom look 
and also save a heartache if it goes wrong. So now we can start reassembling this switch. Now, I'm not gonna go through every single component and tell you how to put it back together. It's a fairly logical process. You just put it back together the way you took it apart. I mean, I say that, but I did still cock this up quite badly, which you'll see at the end. But all the buttons are gonna go back in the same way, the ribbon cables. Just make sure that you're not forgetting anything. I laid everything out in front of me so that I knew exactly what had to go back in. And even still, I made mistakes, which you'll see in a minute. If you're gonna use tweezers like these ones, which are metal tipped, you do need to be very careful. I know there's probably gonna be a few comments about that, but I have done this job quite a long time now to know how to handle a ribbon cable. So we can start reassembling some of the buttons and putting the screws back in. I was just going for it, hoping I was putting the right ones in the right place. But you can see that I actually forgot to put the speaker in on the left-hand side, which is incredibly frustrating. Ah, bastard. That was the moment I realized I'd forgotten to put the speaker in. I then had to take apart that entire corner of the switch light, lift up the motherboard and slide that speaker down underneath and then reassemble. The back can then go on and I can put all the screws in and hopefully we'll have ourselves a working Nintendo Switch light. The other issue I had was that there was three screws left over. I have no idea where those went, but hey, there was probably some leftover bricks when they built Rome. I could finally then use the Nintendo Switch Lite. As you can see, it works absolutely perfectly. I then used Google Translate to turn the language to English so I could actually read it. And yeah, it works and I'm super, super happy with it. I would love to end this video properly and I apologize for the lack of professionalism, but my studio is still under construction as is my entire house because I've been renovating one for the past year and a half. So you'll have to forgive me. Here's the Nintendo Switch Lite. I'm really, really pleased with how this thing has turned out. The midnight blue purpley color is just absolutely stunning. And I actually really like the white screen. It works absolutely perfectly. And I just cannot believe that we managed to actually pull this off. It looks just so stunning with that white screen lens. For the eagle-eyed people, there is one thing that went ever so slightly wrong. Dun, dun, dun. Yes, there are two screws that bloody poked through the shell. This is honestly the bane of my life. I've done this countless times. Unfortunately, there's just so many different screws on this thing and I just got it wrong. Simple as that, I got it wrong. I put the wrong screws in and now they will be there together to haunt me for the rest of my life. But that being said, we were able to bring back one working Nintendo Switch from going into landfill. And for that, I'm really, really pleased. Honestly, this is probably gonna be now my daily use Switch light. It's just a one to be used and abused and appreciated. I think that white screen lens actually really looks good and it does match the white of the buttons very, very well. I'm sure many people will probably disagree, but I really like it. Massively gutted about those screws. It's not the complete end of the world because China does make aftermarket shells, but annoyingly they haven't made one yet for the midnight blue version. And also that kind of defeats the purpose of using just the parts that I had available to me because then I might as well have just bought a replacement screen or a brand new switch. I really hope you've all enjoyed this video. Again, I'm really sorry for the lack of professionalism on the outro, but hopefully it's still sufficient. Massive thank you to iFixit for sponsoring this video. You should definitely follow the guides. I didn't do that, and that's what happens when you don't do that. But if you follow the guides, they tell you where to put the screws and what screws to use. So yeah, my fault. I should have listened to the sponsor of my own video. Thank you very much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next one. Bye.